The Neuroscience of Empathy and Compassion The Neuroscience of Empathy Empathy was first mentioned in neuroscience over half a century ago. Over the last several years, there have been numerous studies to understand the science behind empathy. Social neuroscience has made significant progress in explaining the mechanisms behind the feeling of empathy. Although numerous studies examine the neural mechanisms underlying empathy in humans, they largely focused on experience sharing and mentalizing due to the complexities of how we function. The Neuroscience of Compassion It is true that empathy is somewhat required for humans to connect with each other on an emotional level. However, to be pro-social, it is important to take empathy to the next level. In other words, being empathetic to someone does not motivate a person to move forward. That is where empathetic concern or compassion garners attention in social neuroscience. Compassion is defined as a complex internal state characterized by pro-social motivation to improve another person's life or condition. Compassion training is really professional coach training and the development of a number of interpersonal and intrapersonal skills and leads to increased cooperation, trust, and the ability to empower another, as well as improved psychological, well-being, and emotional health. Deepening our ability to have compassion improves our ability to effectively help others. Comparing Empathy and Compassion A notable study about empathy and compassion by neuroscientists Tanya Singer and Olga Klemecki examined different experiment groups for compassion and empathy, revealed how the brain reacts to both. The two types of training have led to different emotions and attitudes towards action. The group which trained for empathy found the feeling uncomfortable and troublesome. On the other side, the group that trained for compassion was able to create positivity among the group members. This group exhibited more kindness and was more eager to help others compared to the empathy group. Here is the takeaway. By improving our ability to provide compassion to others, which are essentially coaching skills, we can better cope with responses from other people and help them more. In Klemecki's words, our emotions are not set in stone. Through compassion training, we can increase resilience and approach stressful situations with a more positive effect. Compassion or empathy, what is required? In summary, many research studies have now proven that there is a neurobiological mechanism behind our feelings of empathy or compassion. There is no doubt that both empathy and compassion are useful to understand and relate to the experience of other people. With professional coach training, it is possible for us to shape our emotional reactions and thus we can change the way we respond to others and situations. More than empathy, Compassion helps in the well-being of self as well as others who need support. Compassion helps us to increase our resilience, improve social connections, and helps us in overall well-being. It also elicits a more positive response in others due to the prefrontal cortex of the brain being more activated. So a person is better able to take responsibility. The coaching response must never be manipulative always genuine, but might be something like, I am genuinely sorry you are experiencing this in your relationship. Let's work together to help you move forward to build a better life.